Hello, this is Keenan Maxfield. I'm with Green Go Solar Wholesale Distribution, and today I am going to walk you through getting your Victron system connected to the internet and getting the GX device firmware updated. So for this demonstration, I am going to assume that you have a GX device that has a touch screen. This would be like the Serbo or the Serbo S or the Acrono. Um, if you don't have the touchscreen accessory for the servo, you can connect to it with your phone and use your phone as the touchscreen or even with a computer. Uh, that is beyond the scope of this video. But once you have the screen, then it would look something like what we have on the left side of my screen. Now, what I have here is what it looks like if I'm connected to it on a computer, uh, just so that I can actually record it better. So, I can touch, click on it. Now this is the old interface and part of this video today is going to show you, I'm going to briefly mention the new interface. This old interface was a little bit glitchy when connecting to it with a computer. The new interface fixes all of that. So I touch on the screen or I click on it and then I click menu. Then we're going to click settings and the goal, the first goal, the first priority is to get the Wi-Fi turned onto the correct Wi-Fi network. Now, if you already have this connected via ethernet or something, then you could skip this step altogether, but we're going to go ahead and scroll down to Wi-Fi. So again, first we hit menu, then settings, and then we scroll down to Wi-Fi. Here we go. Then you're going to click Wi-Fi networks. And you are going to collect, uh, click the correct network. Now, this GX device that I'm actually connected to is actually connected to a, an Ethernet cable. But uh, we'll click on one of these to just show you what you would do. So you click on the correct Wi-Fi network. And then you would click on the Wi-Fi password. Click it twice. Notice that when this comes up to type in the password, this is like a normal keyboard, a QWERTY keyboard. So it's actually really nice for entering in the password. The only thing is the uh, it, it defaults to capital. So you need to turn off capital to get to your lowercase letters. You've got your numbers, your char special characters. So you put in the password. After you finish putting in the password, you'll click this checkbox. Make sure to click the check mark. Um, after that, uh, at some point it'll, um, it'll connect and you'll get an IP address if it connects successfully. So just wait for that to happen. Once you've successfully connected, then we can click back and back and back. And now we can go up. So there's a couple more things we want to make sure to do. So one is that in the VRM online portal, um, you're going to want to get your VRM portal ID number is this number here. And once you've set up your system, then this number really doesn't matter. Uh, nobody can steal any information once it's set up, but until you've actually set up your system, you don't want to share that number. So you're going to take this number and write it down and save it for later. Uh, this is how you're going to set up the VRM online portal. And my next video on YouTube is going to be about setting that up. So uh, keep your eyes open for that. Um, but you can see here if you have connection errors and uh, you want this re reboot device when no contact, you want this to be turned on. And I normally set this for some, anywhere between four hours and 24 hours. You want it to, uh, the, basically, this will just say that if you, it cannot connect to the internet for more than a certain amount of time, then just reboot the device. I think that's a, an important little setting to get. Um, remote console. Well, let's see. Let's do system setup first. On system setup, this gets a lot of people wrong. You want to just make sure that your AC inputs are set correctly. By default, it'll say grid and generator. 
And if you only have one AC input, you want to make sure to turn AC input 2 to not being available. So that's one thing that a lot of people miss. Um, if this has a DC system, like DC loads or a DC charger that is not already monitored by the Victron equipment, you want to make sure to turn that on. I'm going to hit back. Remote console. This is one thing that you want to make sure that this is enabled. So in here, click Enable Remote Console. And we can see that this is online. I should have mentioned some of these screens might look a little bit different if you're on an older firmware. So um, the perhaps the first thing you should do after uh, updating, sorry, after connecting to the internet is set your date and time. Make sure to set the correct time zone. And then go ahead and update your firmware. So click firmware. See if it'll actually click. This is the glitch I was talking about. There we go. Click online updates. Then you want to make sure that the auto update is on check and update. Uh, by default, this is not enabled. So you want to make sure to check and update. Then you can click the press to check and then you can have it update. And then the menus will look more like the ones I've been showing you. The next thing I want you to look at is general. Access level, user and installer, and the network security profile. For now, I want you to put it as unsecured. This uh, will allow the this will allow you to program things from the internet. And then once you've got everything configured the way you want it, if then if you want to down the road, you can change it to secured or weak. But yeah, for at first you want to unsecured for online settings. Okay, that's basically it. If you're on an older firmware, you would have wanted to look instead for uh, two-way communication and make sure that two-way communication was turned on. And then under remote console, you would have wanted to, there would have been a button here that would have said disable password check. And you would have wanted to click on that a couple of times. On the latest firmware, those buttons all go away. And then down on display and setting language, right here. If you want to try out the new user interface, which I highly recommend, scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says user interface, and then click on it and click new UI. And that is it for this video. Um, if you are um, if you're getting technical support from me, from Green Go Solar or from Keenan Maxfield, then uh, after you've got your system connected to the internet and you've got your firmware updated, then go ahead and send that uh, VRM online portal ID to me directly and we can go from there. If you are just setting your own system up, then you're going to want to go to vrm.victronenergy.com and set up your system and I will have another video for that here on YouTube. Thank you very much. Have a great day.